From the depths of the desert sands emerged the great state, transformed into a modern metropolitan without forgetting its heritage. Follow us on a short journey encompassing Qatar's past and present. Qatar, the beginning. The name Qatar is a Latinized transliteration from the Arabic Qatar, pronounced locally as Qatar. Human habitation of the Qatar Peninsula dates as far back as 50,000 years, when small groups of Stone Age inhabitants built coastal encampments and settlements. Islam spread through the entire Arabian region during the 7th century. On the 18th of December 1878, Sheikh Jasim bin Muhammad Al Thani founded Qatar, unifying the Qatari tribes under his rule. Qatar is a peninsula surrounded by water from all sides except the south, where it is connected to Saudi Arabia. It spans around 200 km north to south and 100 km east to west. As the start of 2014, the population of Qatar has grown to over 2 million people, with the local indigenous Qatari population totaling approximately 250,000. Qatar is a melting pot of civilizations, a model for the rest of the world where communities live side by side in peace and harmony. The Qatari society is a tribal society, and even now in the 21st century, the tribe is important to individuals. Qatari people belong to one of two groups, desert people and coastal people. The desert people or the Badu are the people that were historically the camel and goat herders. They lived in tents and moved between locations, looking for grass and water for themselves and their animals. All Bedouin tribes have now settled into the cities and towns of Qatar. The coastal people or the Hadar are the people that lived in coastal settlements and made their living as fishermen or working in the pearl industry. Nowadays, the distinction between the groups is becoming less and less significant, where both desert and coastal people live amongst one another and now lead very similar lifestyles. Qataris are still strongly connected to the desert. In the cool Qatari winter, Qataris head to the desert for camping, hunting, and to seek faga, desert truffles that grow naturally just below the surface of the ground if enough rain falls during a period between October and December. The faga is a delicacy enjoyed by both young and old, and the search for these truffles in itself is an enjoyable Qatari pastime. The traditional Qatari attire is modest and concealing in accordance with Islamic teachings. The men wear a long, loose white dress called a thobe, and a headgear consisting of white scarf folded into a triangle called a ghutra. And to anchor the ghutra we find the agal, a black coiled rope. In public, women wear the abaya, a loose and traditionally black overgarment, and the shayla, a long rectangular scarf used to cover the hair. Some women choose to cover their face by wearing the niqab, while some older ladies still prefer to wear the traditional batula, a face mask made from a thick metallic fabric. When with other women or very close male relatives, you'll find Qatari women wearing all types of clothing while preserving their modesty. As Qatar is a tribal society, the meaning of family could be extended to include the whole tribe. Qataris usually marry young, on average males marry between 23 and 30, and females between 18 and 25. Marriages are mostly arranged albeit, with the consent of both the bride and the groom. Most couples start off by living with their in-laws, and many small families will continue to live with their in-laws until they own their own home. It is very common to name the firstborn male and female after their paternal grandparents, as it is considered a form of respect and a way to remember them even after they pass away. It is also very common in Qatari culture to use the nickname Abu or Um. For example, Abu Ahmad meaning father of Ahmad and Um Ahmad meaning mother of Ahmad. 
The full name of a Qatari represents his or her lineage, showing their father's, grandfather's and tribal name. In the past, when children were around 6 years old, they went to the Mtawa, who would teach them the Holy Quran, as well as the basics of reading, writing and basic math. In 1952, the state education system was established, providing free education to all Qataris in government-funded schools. Qatar University, the only national university in Qatar, accepted its first batch of students in 1973 and currently has an alumni body of over 30,000. In 1995, Qatar Foundation was established with a mission to serve the people of Qatar by supporting and operating programs in three core mission areas education, science and research, and community development. It has an established a number of branches for some of the world's most renowned universities. With its aspirations for modernization, Qatar has placed an emphasis on education and the economy to ensure prosperity of its citizens. Qatar is fast becoming a focal point for the world's leading scientists and researchers and is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. This rapid change occurred at the same time as initiatives were launched that aimed to preserve Qatar's rich cultural heritage, a heritage whose roots are deeply set in Islamic beliefs. And there is more ahead. Qatar's national vision aims at transforming Qatar into an advanced country by 2030, capable of sustaining its own development and providing for a high standard of living for its entire people for generations to come. Yeah, Allah, you are my life, I need you blessing me.